is some of the, of the stuff that you certainly need to, to you know, think about. Um, so make sure you're being thoughtful at the same time you're writing. So the two societies that our founders said at least were worth taking note of was Athens and Rome, okay? And we're gonna kind of dig into them just a little bit and maybe talk about a couple of the pros and cons of the two, of the two places. So let's start with Athens for just a few minutes. And let's also go back to Monday for a minute and talk about the idea of democracy, right? What, what do we say, what, what's a good way of, what we said about democracy, what did, what's a hallmark of that? Or what does it look like? You couple guys who are on your cell phones, put them away, please. Thank you. Yeah. There's usually layers, like federal and state. So that, that's true, there are layers. What's the bare bones? Somebody, somebody said something else. That, yeah. uh, the people get a say. The people get a say, very good. The, the power rests in the hands of the people. All these are good thoughts, okay? So there was a democracy before the United States, or a form of democracy before the United States, and it was in Athens, Greece, and we call this Athenian democracy, because it wasn't the whole country. And one of you guys, or two of you guys, the other day said, in discussing the idea of the people rule, you said it would be easier in a smaller place than a bigger place. You're right. It, it would be easier. Um, that's not to say it would be easy or a piece of cake, but it'd be easier. Okay, so Athens is a city. And even a city can be big. I mean, Wichita is 400,000 people now, right? So even Wichita, if you think governing Wichita would not be easy, right? Y'all know half the time our city commission, county commission, and our school board end up in squirrely fights. And that's in a town of 400,000. So then you can imagine upping that to multiple million people, larger land space, all that. So Athens was a city that may have made some made some things a little more possible. Look at the next thing it says here. This is important. It emphasized human and political values. In other words, it actually said justice before the law. It actually emphasized everybody should have a right to trial or a right to a hearing or a right to something. Like we get mad sometimes if our courts get it wrong, but the thing is 99.9% .9 of the time our courts get it right. I'm not saying I'm not mad about the times they get it wrong because I am, but you get my point. You gotta start by saying, there's a process. There needs to be a process. These guys said there's a process. We're gonna do it, and we're gonna have high goals. People called the city-state, or their little government area, it's where we get our word politics. I want you to see this. You see this word right here? They called it the polis, or the polis. Where we get our word politics comes from the idea of Athens, the governed city-state. Now what happened to Athens? So now we gotta talk about this. What happened? Why did it work for a while? How'd it go down? It went down because they practiced, this is what I would write in your notes, they practiced direct democracy. Which meant that every time they had an issue, I mentioned this on Monday, every time they had an issue, everybody came in, everybody voted, factions emerged. Factions that actually wanted to injure each other. That's not good, right? That's how it went down. It went down because they practiced direct democracy, which is not the United States, by the way. We don't do direct democracy. We have moments we do direct democracy. If I was in here today and I said, I'm cool with us having a test on Monday or Wednesday next week, or Wednesday and Friday, we don't have class Monday, Wednesday and Friday, and I'll take a vote, that would be a direct democracy moment. So we have moments we say, let's pick a direct democracy moment. Sometimes local uh, issues, smaller issues, bond issues. We do that a lot of times with money. Um, but that's what they did. They, they practiced that. So there were definitely some positives in that. I only, want you to, I only want you to just see these names. You don't need to write down the stuff, but I want you to see their names. Two people who come out of that tradition or have be that tradition was Plato and Aristotle. So... Just write their names down. Don't write down maybe the details, but just write down their names. They're important because they were the ones who said, we can do something better than tyranny or monarchy or whatever, okay? So Plato and Aristotle. So if, if this was a rare thing, 
if Athenian democracy was a rare thing, what was the norm? The norm was monarchy, which is one person rules, right? You already know that. There's going to be a deal up here that says it in a minute. Was, the norm was monarchy, which of course is tyranny, because when one person rules, that's going to not be a good thing. Can you imagine if any one person ruled? It's not a good thing, right? So that was usually what happened was monarchy. And then these guys tried to do something different and involve the people. That's a positive. Um, but there were people, Plato was one of them, and I'll just say this real quick. There were people like Plato who thought if you had a good king, some people use the word benevolent, which means a good-hearted person. If you had a good king, it could work. They're right. It could work, right? We'll get to this later on. When our, our first president, George Washington, had a chance to be the king, if you didn't know that. They voted on They liked him so much, they said, we're going to make you king. He said, no. He said, even if I'm... Even if I do a good job, what happens next? You see, that's not a good long-term plan. Like, it could work. Uh, Machiavelli is the guy that wrote a book called The Prince, and he imagines a good king or a good prince. Could work. Um, bad bad long-term plan, even if it works. Okay, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Well, the second government is, is Rome. But, yeah, before we go that, I already said some of this, so you can think about it. The problems with the Athenian democracy was they ended up fighting class conflict. The other problem was property qualifications. So it turned into anger, it turned into fights, and it turned into issues over who owns what. And that made it not work. That's kind of what I want you to know about. Just direct democracy. In fact, here's a last word to write in our notes, chaos. Because John Adams, our, our famous early founder, John Adams, that's what he said. He said, Athenian democracy had the right idea, end in chaos. I think that's a great way to end that, because it did. So, even good ideas can go downhill. Um, I want you to see this next slide. I just want you to at least see the, the, the way it lays out. Aristotle said governments can be broken down like this. Okay, don't worry about, the, don't worry about this up here, but right here. Leadership of one, which is a monarchy, often leads to tyranny. You know what tyranny is? It's, it's bully rule, isn't it? Pretty much, it's bully rule. It's not a good thing. Then you could have the leadership of the few. That's an aristocracy, which means a few people have all the money, right? That's not so good either. This is a this is a more formal way of saying leadership by a few. Oligarchy. Oligarchy. This is dangerous. Leadership of the few. So leadership of the few could be a wealthy class, it could be a wealthy group, it could be a family, but it's not usually a good thing. And then you have the leader of the many. This is what Athens was trying. This is what the United States tries, which we're going to learn about. This would be the best scenario because the people would speak, um, which we call sometimes polity, which the, is, is the idea of everyone's involved in the political game. Um, and of course, that has elements, large elements of democracy. So I want you to be, I know you, I know you need to know this. No monarchy, no oligarchy, no aristocracy. Now aristocracy sometimes is connected more to money. Okay? We still have lots of countries that live on or aristocratic, no doubt. Definitely still have countries that are monarch, monarchies. England is still a monarchy today, but not really. They're a monarchy in name. There's some other countries in Europe. There are monarchies in name, but that's not how they work anymore. Like the king or queen doesn't actually do the business. They just are ceremonial almost, which is good. It, it would not work. It did not work. Okay? Okay, the second, so that's, that gives you a feel of Athens. Athenian democracy. Second place to try something similar to what our founders thought might work was Rome. Rome's also a city, right? If Athens is connected to dem democracy, Athenian democracy, Rome is connected to the term republic. Somebody look in your notes and tell me what we said republic was the other day. Where the supreme power is held by the people and their elected representatives. Rome said the way to do this 
and have it actually work. They were building on Athens, they thought. The way to do this and actually have it work is to have representatives who speak on behalf of the people. People are still involved, but you have representatives. That's a good idea. The problem with Rome, we'll get to the problems with Rome, but one of the problems with Rome, they're saying that, but how are they doing representation? Who gets to serve in the assembly? Right? Those kind of things. So Rome was, they, we call it a republic. Because they tried the idea of representatives. They tried the idea of representatives. Okay? So if Plato and Aristotle came out of the Greek, Greek tradition of Athenian democracy, who are some people who we can at least name who came out of the Roman tradition? Again, don't write down their information. Yeah. Wasn't Alexander the Great Roman? He's, not, he's Greek. <laughs> you're all right. You're, uh, yeah. Uh, I think Octavian, maybe? Well, you're right about that, Octavian. Uh -huh. Now, you're exactly Caesar. Okay, we're going to do politics, so we're not going to do war so much, but Caesar is the one everybody would probably you know, recognize the name right off, right? But here's the, here's the, the, one, the two we're going to name, you've not maybe heard of as much. Again, don't write down the information, but Polybius, and you may have heard this name, Cicero. You heard that name? Now, the other thing about the Romans, right, is that the Romans, that the Romans are going to have a massive, they're going to start as a city, but then they're going to have a massive area to rule. Of course, they're going to rule over what we call the Holy Lands. So if you're a Christian, you know that Jesus was born under Roman rule. The Romans were in charge of even where he was at. They, they ruled a big area. You can see up here, England to Egypt. I mean, it was massive. Okay? Now, this is where we're going to take a quick pause for a second and see a term underneath Cicero. Because Cicero may have done something and said something no one before him had really said out loud. He argued that the representative idea was good, um, but it was dangerous. And it certainly was in the case of Rome. Rome. Rome and Athens both imploded, which means basically they killed themselves. By the way, Abraham Lincoln said during our American Civil War, no one will step across the ocean to kill America. He said, if we die, we'll die, on the, uh, we will die of our own. He is right. He was right. He probably still is right. Usually big countries tend to doom themselves for stupidity. Cicero said, you guys see this? At the end of his one of his essays, he said the key to any society is an understanding or appreciation for natural law. So let's write that one down. Natural law. Because we want to explain that. So natural law is the idea that government can't give you any rights you don't already have. Now, we could, these come in, this comes in different phrases. You have your own traditions. I have mine. We have some that are shared. There will be some scholars who will say natural law is the idea of God-given law or God-given rights. Or our founders wrote in the, in the, in the Constitution, Endowed, you are endowed by your creator with certain inalienable. Inalienable means, or unalienable means, basically rights that you can't change. Yeah, I meant that basically why you meant that destiny. It's like so. What is it? You meant that destiny. Sort of, yeah, sort of. Definitely elements of it. Our founders are going to say, what are those unalienable rights? What would natural, if you believe in natural law and you believe there are rights that are above any governments, they can't give them, they can't take them away. They need to give them to you, but they can't take them away. What would that be? Somebody raise their hand. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Right. That's what our founders are going to say natural, is natural law. Right? So do you remember the other day when I was talking about civil rights? I think I said it in here. And I said the difference between freedom and liberty. Freedom, the idea you walk out of the jail. Liberty, the idea that you do something with your freedom. Okay, John Locke, which we'll get to some of these other people, but John Locke's going to say, to hit upon what you just said, John Locke's going to say it's life, liberty, and property. Our founders are going to strike the term property because they want people to vote whether they had property or not. But before that, it, property was always involved. Property was involved in these societies.
property is involved in the English society. Some people said, you can't vote if you don't have property because you don't care. You gotta have money in the game. You know, you gotta have money in the game. If you don't have money in the game, why, would, why do you matter? Why do you care how things go? They, they thought that. Our founders changed that up a little bit, which I'm glad they did. But they had that debate about property. So good. So let's just say life and liberty for right now because we'll get to the other part here in a little bit. But I hope that makes sense to you. That's an important moment because if natural law really is what God gave you, yeah, it's not, it's not, up, to, it's not up for debate. It's not up for debate. So that's an important thing. So what, how did the Roman Republic die? Since Athens Republic, we talked a little bit about class conflict, chaos, etc. How did the Roman Republic die? Two things. It got too far stretched out. They couldn't administer it. Too far stretched out. And then on top of all that, greed. Which is always a concern. It's a concern in America today, too. Greed. But you can't, it's hard to control greed. Uh, they started letting, I mentioned Caesar. Caesar was a military hero. Suddenly, instead of being, instead of caring what the assembly said, they cared what Caesar said. Instead of caring what the assembly ruled or voted on, they cared what Caesar or Octavius said. Somebody got their hand up. Yeah. Well, maybe corruption. Corruption, absolutely. Yeah, they're kind of hand in hand, but greed and corruption go hand in hand. Okay, since our, I know our time is going to get short here in a second. So when our founders looked at these two examples. They're going to say Greece lasted three or four hundred years. Ro the, the, the Athenian democracy lasted three or four years. The Roman Republic lasted four or five hundred years. By the way, how old is America? Like 250. You can see why people get nervous, right? Now listen, I want America to survive forever. But you know, it's not, it's not like one and done. It's not like you, it's done and you're good. It'll have to be worked out hard because we'll fall on the same sword if we're not careful. But here's the last thing maybe to write for now. Our founders said, what if we took elements of Athenian democracy, the voting parts, and what if we took elements of the representative parts and we balanced it with law? That is the magic. That's the magic potion right there. I'll say it again. What if we took the part over here where you can vote and we balanced it with representation, but everybody has to be represented. Like every area has to have a congressman, a senator, or whatever. And you balanced it with the rule of law, which by the way gets back to this. See? The rule of law. What happens if we balanced it with the rule of law? Can you repeat again what they said sure. from the Romans? Say that again, sorry. Can you, uh, so you said voting elements from Athens, um, West. Representative elements from, like, you know, representation from Rome. And what if you added to that a standard, like a rule of law, that applies to everybody, by the way. The law has to apply. You can't be, you can't be random about it, right? It's got to apply to everybody exactly the same. That's equality. Yeah. How long did you say the like the empire stood in Athens and Rome last? Time? About four hundred years, three to four hundred for Athens and maybe five hundred for Rome. The problem is they still existed in some form, but in a better form, like in the better form, Athens three to four hundred years. I, I could maybe go for four or five hundred for for Rome. So when we had a, and you guys will learn this sometime in class. We had a president in 1974 who resigned from office. His name was Richard Nixon. There was an episode called Watergate. Somebody you never heard of, his vice president. It was a terrible time. People thought better of their presidents. Nowadays, people don't think better of their presidents, probably. But at that time, people thought better of their presidents. They didn't want to think that their presidents were liars or cheats. And the vice president, his name was Gerald Ford, and he came to the podium, and everybody was pretty upset. And the president resigned. He was going to get impeached and removed. The president resigned. He walked out to a helicopter with his family. Everybody was crying. He flew away. People were embarrassed by him. There were a lot of things, right? But the vice president walked to the podium, and he said a line, which I still think is one of the greatest constitutional lines ever. He didn't say, we thank President Nixon for his service. He didn't say, he's right, he's wrong. He didn't say any of that junk. 
which is political campaigning, this is what he said. He said, we are a nation of laws and not men. That was a great thing to say. You see what he just said? He basically said to me in one sentence, we're good. I was just a guy. That's something all of us need to remember every time we look at any person that's in charge is, that's cool, that's a guy, right? Day, day moves on. It's, the minute you don't think you're expendable, like the minute you don't think somebody else can get your job is not a good thing. You know, I mean, there's a few people who do things better than anybody else. Michael Jordan, LeBron James, those guys do things better than anybody else. It'd be tough to replace them, right? But your job will always be filled. And what Gerald Ford was saying was, he was here, that was interesting, bye. We still have a constitution, we still have a country, we're still free, let's go. Okay, does that make sense? I hope that makes some sense and how that mix goes. Okay, so we're gonna watch a little bit on individualism Friday, and then we're gonna start writing class some. And that will we'll be good. Do you guys have any notes? I know we're getting close. Are you have any questions? I mean, hey, I, I have a question for you. Or don't leave yet. Okay, listen. Shh, 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 just before you go. So I'm typically not going to listen do the whole thing. I'm not going to put that on on Moodle. I'm going to let you guys take good notes. But what I might do at the end of the week is do kind of a summary thing a little bit, like even if it's some terms, to help you with terms. Make sure you can get on Moodle. Hopefully you can see my email address, because a couple of you have emailed me, but make sure you can. Well, we have added the PowerPoint. That's not really the whole thing. I might do some summary statements, but I want to take it. Hey, I'll